Hey gang, welcome to Time in the Market, the investing channel with a long-term focus. Sorry for the lack of videos lately. My wife got sick, then I got sick, but now I'm all better. So taking a look at Coca-Cola, getting back into the swing of things with these videos. Ticker KO, stock is up just a little bit after earnings this morning. Earnings themselves were pretty solid. One thing I look at when I look at these food slash beverage companies is volume actually growing. And in this case, volume is up 2%, net revenues up about 3%, organic revenues grew 15%. When you look at the revenue discrepancy here, it's really all driven by currency issues. We'll take a look at that in a second but operating margin was up about 120 basis points versus the prior year non-gap earnings per share up about seven percent so overall solid results from a solid company this is a known name i get why people buy this stock my question is always going to be is this the right time to buy something like coca-cola i do manage some portfolios for people uh, that i know that i own coca-cola in through those I own Pepsi as well, so I try to keep an eye on this industry and just make sure that the price point is right because I would like to add Coca-Cola in those portfolios that are more dependent on dividends when the price point gets interesting. So as you look at their overall revenues, uh, one thing that's interesting is you're seeing massive price increases in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, pretty significant price increases in Latin America. Those are really driven by inflation in countries like Turkey, uh, Argentina, et cetera. You can kind of see currencies being devalued there in a lot of ways as well in some of those markets. So prices up 24%, currency impact down 23% leading to an reported net revenues of about 7% in that area. But again, case volume not impacted despite the large price increases they are due to inflationary pressures. Similar thing in Latin America. Latin America is actually doing really well for Coke. Concentrate sales are up, price mix up about 90%, offset by currency impact, but net revenues up about 20%, and an increase in unit case volume, really, really solid there. Then you look at North America, you're seeing an 11% increase in price slash mix volume down about 1%. I think it's getting to a point in North America where price is kind of where it needs to be. I don't know how far more they can push it. As you can kind of see, it's really the only market that they're seeing case volume pressure in, and it's still seeing a pretty big increase in price, despite the fact that inflation is slowing down. So a lot of these food companies obviously took advantage of inflation to kind of offset their costs and maybe raise prices a bit more than their costs were going up to improve margins, improve revenue growth, et cetera. But I think that's slowing down now. So you'll probably see North America price mix start coming down and kind of equalizing with where inflation is, maybe being slightly above inflation if Coke wants to improve margin. So overall, solid results, net revenues up about 3%. You're kind of seeing what's driving that, sparkling soft drinks, Coca-Cola Zero Sugar doing really well. Sparkling flavors, juices, value-added dairy like Fairlife doing okay. Coffee struggling a little bit, especially in the UK. Sports drinks doing okay. They've obviously made some acquisitions in the sports drinks area with Body Armor. I think sometimes when you look at Coke and some of the acquisitions they made, whether it's Body Armor, whether it's Tapu Shiko, whether it's whatever, it's kind of disappearing in this big conglomerate. But with certain brands, they're doing decent things in, in, in some of these emerging drink areas, some of the alcoholic beverages that they have out there, spiked seltzer, etc. I think they're doing some interesting things that can help grow them a little bit more than they otherwise would without stuff like that. So I like that they're experimenting. I like that they're experimenting with sizes, with price points, etc. in all of these markets. They mentioned AI in the earnings release, which is pretty silly for a company like Coke, but hey, everybody's doing it, so why not us, I guess, is their thinking. So as you look at their guidance over here, they're guiding a, a an improved thing. So they're improving their their guidance for the revenue side to nine to ten percent against that. That's organic revenue, so that doesn't include currency impact. That's probably gonna come down to like three to four, five percent after currency impact. You can kind of see that comparable net revenues in the five to six percent range actually. That's also an improvement over what they were projecting before, projecting about nine point two billion in free cash flow. And they do mention ongoing potential payments related to tax litigation. So I'll mention that here. There is a tax court, a tax lawsuit against Coke right now. The IRS basically said that they owe probably about $3 billion for some nonsense that they pulled with some foreign subsidiaries, kind of making them more profitable than they would be if they charged them properly and thus paying less um, taxes in the United States and more taxes in foreign countries, which the IRS isn't too happy about. So there's some ongoing litigation there. No update as of yet for that, but potentially there's, you know, 3 billion plus in expenses that could be out there. 
However, you know, I'm, I'm not super worried about that. Their balance sheet can handle it. If you sort of look at their balance sheet, it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. 16 billion in cash and short-term investments versus about 36 billion in debt. They've been slowly paying down that debt. Uh, one thing to note is that the, the debt is due to some acquisitions. Uh, at the end of the day, this is a company that is basically paying the majority of their free cash flow in dividends. That's kind of what you're getting with Coke. That's kind of why I own it in those portfolios. This is a dividend aristocrat. This isn't a company that's going to explode in terms of their stock price, but it's a company that's going to be a steady eddy. If you look at their overall performance in the last 10 years, only up about 5% annually. That's sort of what I expect for something like this. You get 5% price return, you get a dividend that's 3% and growing at 4 to 5% a year. Maybe sometimes there's a better opportunity to buy the stock than today. If you look at their overall valuation, you kind of see where they're priced from a next 12 month free cash flow yield, kind of in that 3.9% range. I think it's actually a bit lower given that this is estimating higher free cash flow than they're actually guiding for. Just a couple of months ago, this was in that 4.4% range. I think Coke, in my mind, when it gets into the 4% free cash flow yield, that's when it gets interesting. At that point, you're sort of getting a dividend yield in that 3 to 3.3%. Right now, if you look at their historical mean on the dividend side, since this is a dividend payer, kind of getting about a 3% yield. The mean is in the 3.2% range. The highest has been it's at 4.4%. Again, that's kind of in the 2020 range, which is sort of ignore, but you can get it in 3.5%. You could have gotten it rather in the 3.5% yield range just a couple of months ago. So is today a great price to buy Coke? Not so sure, but we'll look at that in a second. One thing I know is that Coke is very consistent. Again, 2008 to 2009, only 3% shrinkage in revenue, still generating net income, still raising their dividends, still generating free cash flow. You look at 2020 during the pandemic, yes, the stock price dropped quite a bit, but revenue was only down 11%, recovered pretty quickly, even though it was down 11%. Net income, still almost 9 billion. Free cash flow, still almost 9 billion. Still raise their dividend, still consistent. I think that's why people buy Coke. They don't buy it because they expect it to grow 20% year over year. They buy it because when stuff happens in the market, when there is a recession, when something happens, people still kind of buy Coke. People still like it. People still enjoy it. People still like their sugary drinks and their revenue isn't going to take a massive hit. They're still going to generate free cash flow. They're still going to pay out a dividend, raise that dividend. And that's why people own it. That's why people like it. That's why people feel comfortable holding it for the long term. Yes, during the pandemic, the stock did drop from you know 58 to 44, 45. But I don't think people were all that worried that Coke is going to go out of business. I think people were thinking, yeah, there's a bit of an impact to the business due to the fact that they can't sell to restaurants for now. But a recovery will happen. People will still shop in grocery stores. They'll still buy Coke. Yes, there's competition. And that's one thing to worry about as an investor. You know, it, with these price increases, with the fact that they're raising prices 11% year over year in North America, are people going to start shifting their purchases elsewhere to cheaper alternatives? Because people are being pressed their wallet is being pressed. And I think that is something to consider as a long term investor, you have to be realistic about their growth potential. This isn't a company that's going to be able to raise prices and maintain volume. They have to slow that down. Their increases on the revenue side are probably going to be three to 5%. That's kind of my estimate, but hopefully they can become more efficient. Um, they can work with their bottling partners to improve margins, et cetera. And they can sort of slowly grow the bottom line and improve the bottom line more than the three to 5% growth they're going to get on the top line. One thing to note when you're buying Coke, you're also getting a decent amount of assets that Coke actually owns. For example, they have ownership interest in a variety of bottlers that do bottling for Coke and other beverage companies. They have a 20% interest in Monster. So again, Monster is a stock I've been interested in. If that drops a bit more, I'll probably take a closer look at that. But Coke already owns 20% of that. That's already reflected in their financials. But if you think about, hey, we own 20 to 25% of all these entities that overall generate about 93 billion in revenue, generate about 7.5 billion in net income. And Coke's part of that is about 1.6 billion. So you're getting this, this business that you know sells this amazing brand but within it you also get 20 to 30 percent ownership in a variety of bottlers in a variety of countries and also monster energy so while 
Coca-Cola doesn't necessarily have a great energy drink brand out there that competes with Monster or Red Bull or Celsius or whatever is coming up. They do own 20% of Monster, so that's something to think about as well. And you have these brands out there that, you know, some of them aren't all that amazing. Body Armor, not sure about that acquisition. But at the end of the day, Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, Fairlife is doing well. Uh, a lot of these new alcoholic brands are interesting. They have a balance sheet that if they do want to acquire something, they can do that. They pay a pretty low interest rate on their debt because they're Coca-Cola and they're continually generating free cash flow. And that's kind of what you're getting here. Disclaimer as we look at the valuation. Video is purely for informational, educational, entertainment purposes only. This is not investment advice. So when, you know, when I look at Coke, I sort of look at these uh, estimates and I'll share this sheet in the description down below. Hit file, make a copy to play around with it. I'm expecting four four and a half percent growth this year, and then maybe slowing growth for the next couple of years. Yes, maybe they'll make an acquisition here and there that will improve it, but this is not a company that's going to grow at more than single digits. However, I think this is a company that can improve margins year over year, and I'm sort of ending up with a 23 and a half percent free cash flow margin. And when you think about 23 and a half percent free cash flow margins, pretty freaking impressive. That's kind of what you're getting here. Really good free cash flow margins, slow growth. The majority of this money going to a dividend, they paid about $8 billion in dividends in 2023 against about $9.7 billion in cash flow. Raising that up by about 4% every single year, you can play around with this, but I'm thinking 4% is pretty reasonable. Getting about a 3% dividend yield today, that's bumping up to a 3.5% yield at today's prices by 2028. So growth on the dividend side, improving yield on costs, paying about 80, 75 to 89% of their free cash flow yield as dividends. Doesn't leave a ton of money for buybacks, but I'm expecting they're gonna use the excess of that in buybacks. They haven't really done a ton of buybacks in the last couple of years. If you look at their buybacks in the last five years, it's basically nothing. So stock count remaining about as is, which is pretty interesting. I'd expect them to do more buybacks, but maybe that's something they do in the future as their free cash flow deviates a bit from their dividend payments. I think at the end of the day, this is a company that you expect to pay the majority of their free cash flow and dividends to grow that dividend and maybe do a little bit on the share side on the side. So that's kind of what I'm getting. When I look at valuations here, I sort of showed you that historical valuation where this stuff kind of trends in that three and a half three, three and a half, four percent free cash flow yield range. For me, if I were to be interested in buying this, I think I'm a buyer when it hits about four percent. So that seems like a fair valuation to me, four percent on a company like Coke. Maybe that gets a bit better when the interest rates start dropping. You kind of think about, hey, could this be in the three percent free cash flow yield like it is trading at right now forever? potentially maybe that's the right number for coke as interest rates come down right now i haven't seen that yet i think four percent is pretty fair when i look at buying the stock for some of those other dividend portfolios that i manage for people in my family and some friends i generally look at a four percent free cash flow yield or higher to get it so when i was trading in the 50 dollars range in october it was kind of interesting then so as i look at this at a four percent free cash flow yield maybe a target return of about 7%, which gets me to 10% with, with dividends, I get a fair value of about 54 bucks, 55 bucks, which is about 15% lower than it's trading at today. So does this mean that it's not a good buy today? Does this mean that I'd be selling in those other accounts today? No, because Coke to me is one of those companies that you just buy and hold and get the dividends and those dividends are going to grow. And if the stock market drops, you're not really worried about it. But I still want to buy at a price that gives me a decent long-term return because if I think if I'm buying at 65 bucks, the expected return here at a 4% free cash flow yield, including dividends, including buyback yield, is about 6.5%, which again, isn't terrible. It's better than you're going to get from a treasury bond. Obviously, there's more risk here than a treasury bond, but you can think about Coke as a pretty safe stock as far as stocks go. Coke is pretty freaking safe. I don't think it's going to go out of business. So I get why people pile into it. I get why people buy it. They get that dividend, it even grows. But for me, when I'm managing other portfolios, when I'm even managing my own portfolio, I kind of want a bit more. So I want a price point that is going to give me a good long-term return because potentially there's other alternatives out there that are better than a 6.5% return in a market like today. So as I look at it, a 7% target return, 10% overall return, 55 bucks a 10% target return, a 13% overall return, 48 bucks. I'd be pretty interested for my own portfolio at 48 bucks, honestly. As you kind of go into the 15% range, you start looking at 43 bucks. You know, you can kind of make an argument that this should be trading in the 
3% free cash flow yield range, which at today's price point gets you to an 11.7 return. That's kind of the argument you'd be making buying today. It's like, this is Coca-Cola. They should be getting a more than market premium because they're Coca-Cola. They're never going anywhere. They're a great brand. They're going to keep paying a dividend. The dividend's going to keep growing. It's a place to put your money and feel pretty safe about it. Nothing's 100% safe in the stock market, but it's a place to put your money and feel pretty safe about it. So in that scenario, if you feel like it should be getting a 3% free cash flow yield, I get why you'd be buying today because it's an 11.7 return. For me, you know, I think I'm more conservative than most investors, especially with portfolios that aren't my own. Um, so I try to be safer. I try to aim for higher expected returns, some margin of safety. And in that regard, I'd probably be more comfortable starting a position in the 50s, in the mid 50s, and building a bigger position in the 40s. Not that it's ever going to get there, and I'm perfectly happy to hold this in the 60s because I don't really care with a stock like this where it goes on a day to day basis. But if I wanted to add more, if I wanted to build out this position and make it much bigger, I think I'd want something where I could probably expect a 10% return. And for me, that would be in the mid 50s range. So what do you think, guys? Are you in on Coke? Do you think today's price point is reasonable, too high, too low? Am I wrong in any way? Leave a comment down below. I'll share this sheet so you can play around with it down below as well. Just hit file, make a copy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Enjoy. Subscribe, all of that good stuff. I'm glad I'm feeling better. Hope you're feeling better too. And let me know down below if you want me to revisit any companies or visit any companies that I've done a video on. So thanks for watching. Bye.